I thought I, I, I thought what gave us life was um, his defensive charge. That's what I thought gave us life. You know, one of the things that I've said a number of times is Caleb is a basketball player, and all of our guys are. And that is, you know, you can make an impact in many different areas. It's not just scoring and shooting. It's distributing. It's playing defense. It's rebounding. It's uh, team chemistry, energy, and effort, enthusiasm. Um, there's a number of ways that you can benefit a team and allow us to be the best that we can be. But I think, I mean, it was nice that he, you know, from an offensive standpoint, he made some some shots down down the stretch. But to me, I thought the biggest play in the game was his defensive charge that he took um, um, late in the second half. Did you ever talk to Caleb about how fans keep his head up? Or? I do. I did. I talked to him yesterday, and um, I told him that uh, I just told him I talked to him through my own experience. I told him one time in the NBA, um, I struggled to shoot the ball for an entire month, and I said that you know I'd always felt like if I missed ten, I was going to make the next ten. And one of the things that I did was I always um, I went through a checklist. You know, one of the things that I looked at was was there anything. Um, you know, wrong you know, in terms of fundamentally with my shot. You know, I told him that sometimes at times my elbow would come out a little bit too much or my guide hand thumb would be on the ball a little bit too much. And I said, looking at your shot, and when he was shooting the last couple of days, I just said, it, it, to me, it just seemed just a smidge flat, just a little bit. So I said, just think about getting a little bit more arc on there. And I told him about um, the importance of continuing to shoot and continuing to shoot good shots. And then I told him about making impact plays in different areas. You know, when I struggled to shoot the ball, then I had like, I thought more about, let me get some extra rebounds. Let me make some more hustle plays. Let me get more and take my mind off of, oh, I've got the ball, I've got to make this shot. And it just puts you in a position to get out of um, whatever lack of rhythm that you have on the shooting end, I just told him that I'm I'm proud of him and just continue to play. And so we had that discussion yesterday. What do you think about the, the return of Pete to the, to the lineup? Yeah. It sounds like you've been trending in a good direction the last couple of days able to practice and, and things like that. Just what were your thoughts on him being back? No, it, it, it was great. You know, we need Pete. And, you know, he's another big that can do a number of things out there on the floor and on both ends. And so – I was very happy that he was back in the lineup. The the disappointing thing was Jalen. Um, he twisted his ankle in shoot around. And I told the guys, there's some things that as a player that I've never experienced. I said, I've never experienced like coming out of my shoe. And like I was like during practice or during play, you know, I, I wasn't the most athletic or fast guy, but I, I I did tie my shoes. I never stepped out of bounds. You know, and our guys practice and they, they step out of bounds. I never turned the ball over and, and, and shoot around when there was no defense. And I've never seen somebody get hurt and shoot around. And so I just, you know, it was just a freak accident of him stepping on someone's foot and him twisting his ankle. And I just love the way that I, th I just was really excited about having Pete back alongside Armando and Jalen. And so um, I was happy and I was also disappointed from the standpoint that Jalen could not play tonight. Brinsley Fire is an issue. DeMarco on uh, Bo May, you know. Uh, yeah. Well, it keeps happening. We got to change practice or do something, or have helmets or whatever. But it's just, <laughs> it's interesting. Huh? Keeping Doug busy. Yeah, we are. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately. You guys made uh, ten threes for just the third time this season. Yeah, but we took twenty nine shots. I didn't like it. It's too much. Um, I don't mind shooting threes, but I thought 
we settled for threes. And because we settled for threes, you don't shoot a very good percentage. And because you settled for threes, you don't attack the basket. And because you settle for threes, you don't attack a basket and you don't get fouled and you don't get to the free throw line, which is a strength for us. And when you settle for threes, that's when you don't draw defenses in and then that cuts down your assists. And so we only have eight assists tonight. And so it trickles down when we settle for the three and that's something that I'll address. I've already have addressed and I will talk to the team uh, tomorrow and leading up to our game on Saturday that we got to get back to attacking the basket and we got to get back to making the extra pass. We talk about Baycott so much over the years, but great performance tonight, double double in the first half. I mean, is there any adjective left to just describe, you know, what he's doing out there? Is that what it is? No, it is. I mean, he's he's just not a normal player. He's just um, it's hard to describe just how valuable and how great he is as as a player, as um, someone to coach. Uh, you know, one of the things as a coach is that, that you really, really want is you want, you know, like, like when you go to practice and you go to games, you want consistency. And you want to have a feeling, whether it's from an individual or a team, that you know what you're going to get from them. It's, it's a great feeling as a coach, not having to guess. Is this guy going to play well? Is this group going to play well? Are we going to play hard? With Armando, there's no guesswork. You know exactly what you're going to get every practice, every game. And what he's doing um, statistically, um, it's just unbelievable. I'm so proud of him and just having another incredible season. Last year, really last year, I, I, I think probably that Virginia game at home, that's when the light came on. He was like, I think I can be pretty good. And that consistency came. And I think this year it came after he sat out the Virginia Tech game. He's a different player since he's come back. You know, the, the games prior to uh, the Virginia Tech game, there was only one half where I felt like Armando was Armando, and that was in the second half of the College of Charleston. And now since he's come back, he's he's been that way um, consistently moving forward. And so I think last year was that time when we played Virginia at home, and I think this year that game that he sat out because of injury against Virginia Tech, and when he came back, I think that's when he's even locked in even more. You said tonight that he's still in a bit of pain from the injury. He is. He twisted his ankle badly. He said he wasn't even sure if he would play the next couple of games, but he has double doubles in the first half of both games. Can yeah. you kind of describe his inner burn and how unique it is? Well, it is, um, especially, you know, he's throughout his career, he's twisted his ankle and he just always comes back. And, you know, and he's somebody that, you know, doesn't want to miss an opportunity to practice, doesn't want to miss an opportunity to play. And, I mean, specifically, he said um, in the game against Louisville, like, he was unsure that morning, but he just had a burning desire to help out the team. And that's what you want. You want 18 guys that are thinking uh, we and more of, instead of – or more of me. And Armando was that – type of player that is always thinking about we, 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 how can I take care of the team? How can I help? And um, he's not a, um, there's many, many ways to lead. He's not a guy that more like a vocal leader, but by, by example, he is our best leader on the team. It's not even close. Let's take two more if there are two. Hey, coach. Uh, so obviously, Well, I, you know, I, you know, coming from Coach Smith and uh, Coach Guthridge, where they took out the team stats out of the Daily Tar Heel, and we weren't allowed to have stat sheets in the locker room. I just was always taught in that 
stats don't mean anything. And it, it continued all the way throughout the NBA. The only time that I ever looked at a stat sheet occasionally was to look at how many threes I took. I didn't want to take more than 50% unless I was hot. And so I just wanted to have a, you know, diversity in terms of the shots that I want. And so I don't, you know, I think that's great that Armando's moving up and rebounds and points. And as a coach, you you want your players to 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 be better than you. I mean, that that's awesome. So um, I don't put a lot of stock in, you know, stats and positions of points scored. I just um, the biggest impact that Armando is making is the impact that he's making on the floor and also the impact that he's making that he, he's been here for four years. I think he's somebody that easily could have left and you know, tried and gone to the NBA, but because of his love and um, his passion for this place and for this community and for this university, um, he's wanted to be here and stay here. And that's the thing that sticks out to me that's that's great. I know the, you know, the stats are awesome, but um, his commitment to this university and this program, to me, that's what stands out. Okay, one more. He also passed Mr. Kupchak tonight. It's pretty good too. Yeah, Mr. Kupchak was in in here, so he passed up two people here. Okay, Everybody great. Else? All right. We'll see you on okay. Friday, okay. and Armando will be the player along okay. with coach. Thanks. Okay. See y'all later. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We'll, we'll be